From Haystack Mountain on the campus of Bishop Walsh Middle High School, it's time once again for commercial video services presentation of area high school basketball. As tonight, the city champion and WMIL champion Allegheny Campers visit the Bishop Wall Spartans. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jamie O'Hanlon, joined this evening by my broadcast partner, John Cunningham. He'll take you through the play-by-play -play tonight. We want to start out, first of all, speaking with the head coach of the Allegheny Campers, Toby Eric. And, Toby, it was a great celebration on uh, at Campobello just a few nights ago as you won the city champion and the WMIL championship. Yes, it was. It was It was important to our kids to win those titles. It's something that slipped away from us last year, the city title. And the kids really wanted it bad, and I was very pleased for them winning both titles in one game. The uh, Sentinels came out, took a very early lead on you, but you changed your defense up, got your intensity, and it was the man that you put in the lineup, it seems, all the time when you want that spark and spirit. Adam Whitaker came in and settled things down for you. Well, Adam does a great job of creating turnovers for us and playing hard on defense and gives us that intensity we need. I, I thought he and Steve Friend had a big impact on the game when they were in Surrey the other night, and sometimes it only takes a little burst to get us going and get a couple turnovers. Also in the game that uh, for you that did such a nice job was Denny Salas, and not only handling the ball, but he took a very good point guard in Gavin Palumbo and held him to four points all night. Well, D Denny's a great defensive player, and, and a lot of times he has the toughest assignment on the other squad, and we depend on him to do that, and most times he delivers, and, and that's why he's one of our leaders. Well, Toby had some good news just a couple of nights ago as uh, Einstein, the team right behind you, lost. But uh, this is no time to relax for the Allegheny Campers, is it? No, it's not. It, we can clinch the region if we win our next two games. And obviously, we have a big game tonight against Bishop Walsh. But uh, if we stumble and lose the game, we could be number two in the region, which uh, means the region final will be played at Einstein, which is something we don't want to happen. And you never want to take for granted a team coached by Joe Carter. Again, this is an inner city matchup, and anything can happen. Well, Joe and I knock heads in baseball. You know, he's a savage and here with basketball. And, and he and Slug do a great job. I mean, I have a lot of respect for the job they do. And, and, and we won't take anyone lightly because they're going to be ready, and we need to be ready if we're going to win the game. Well, Toby, congratulations on your city championship, the MIL championship, and good luck tonight. Thank you very much. All right. It's the Bishop Wall Spartans ho hosting, rather. The Allegheny Campers commercial video services game coming up right after this. And welcome back to Bishop Falls High School. John Cunningham with Jamie O'Hanlon. And we are getting set to bring you the final city basketball game of the 1993-94 campaign pitting the Allegheny Campers with a mark of 20 and 0 against the Bishop Walsh Spartans with a mark of 3 and 18. And uh, Jamie, as Coach Toby Eric told you in the, in the uh, pregame, basically Allegheny, their season has come down to two games. It this has. game and their last game against Mount Savage. It has, but as Toby said, two very important games. They cannot look past anybody. They have the advantage that they wanted now as uh, Einstein took a loss a couple of nights ago, and they're in the driver's seat, but they also control their own destiny. And there you see a look at the Bishop Walsh Spartan huddle as Joe Carter has a few words to say to his troops, and we now, with pride, present our national anthem. Settled in to enjoy area high school basketball action. 
City of Cumberland style. You know, Allegheny like and Bishop Walsh. Allegheny is the city champ at 3-0. Coming into tonight's game, Bishop Walsh can clinch a second place finish tonight. Right now they have a mark of one and two. Fort Hill has already completed its season in the city with a mark of one and three. And Jamie, you saw quite a tussle earlier in the week pitting Allegheny and Fort Hill. And it certainly was the backyard brawl part death as Fort Hill jumped out to a very early lead in that game. And they did a nice job against the pressure defense of the Allegheny campers. However, Toby Eric called a strategic timeout changed his defense up, went to the 1-3-1 matchup zone, and they sprang, in fact, they ran that out of a 1-2-2 full court press. And they were very successful. They shut down, as we said, Denny Salas threw a blanket over one of the premier point guards in this area, Gavin Palumbo, holding Gavin to only four points in that game. And there was also a, uh, an injury in that ball game, and I believe, Jamie, you have an update on that. Yeah, I talked to Scott Puffenberger, and uh, Scott's recovering very nicely from his injury. He's in Memorial Hospital having some quality care given to him. Uh, broke his right collarbone, has a concussion. He has little bits and chunks of time that he doesn't quite account for, and, and I told him I hope that was the, the bits and chunks he couldn't account for were the ones that hurt. But he's doing well, <laughs> and we wish him speedy recovery. All right, Jamie, let's take a look at the starting lineups here as we are getting ready to tip off, and the tip off is controlled by who? Nobody. It'll be Bishop Walsh Ball, as we saw DJ and Jesse, number 25 out of bounds. Mike Harvey, number 35, starring Mike Fields, number 21, Denny Salas, number 22, and Bill Lambeer, otherwise known as number 32, Jake Dermer, for the Bishop Wall Spartans. They will start Jason Helmstetter, Todd Logan, Robbie, Robbie Rupenkamp, as we see a discussion here at the table, Chris Klukas, and Ryan Steiner. And yeah. Steiner, by the way, we saw him. I'm not sure if you were with me in the game or not. When uh, Bishop Walsh played at Fort Hill, Steiner has uh, turned into an excellent three-point perimeter shooter. And there's pressure in the backcourt. And Allegheny, as expected, opens with that pressure. And they do get the turnover as Jake Dummer has the ball. He'll bring it across half court. They fire to Harvey on the baseline. Running one-hander, no good. Rebound caught for Jesse with it. His jump hook is no good. Tip is still loose. And it's controlled by Bishop Walsh, and Helmstetter loses the handle on it, and Mike Fields runs it down. Well, I'll tell you, that pressure from Allegheny is tremendous. Two consecutive turnovers. Allegheny ball, front court, turnaround is an air ball, and you hear the crowd. And, and they're going to, you're going to hear this crowd. Those are two words I love to hear in accordance with high school basketball, and that is packed house. Yes, indeed. As Helmstetter works the ball on Salas. And he leaves it off for Klukas into the paint. Shot is up good off the glass. 2 nothing in favor of Bishop Walsh. That's got to give you a big emotional lift right away. Bishop Walsh comes out in a 1-3-1 one, one matchup zone. And watch the man on the baseline, number 43. Harvey, turnaround in the paint. No good. Dermer on the rebound. He loses the handle on the ball. is knocked out of his hands. And it will remain Allegheny basketball. They trail 2 nothing. 6.46 left to go in quarter number one. There you see the tip. Is it just off the fingertips? Dermer misses from behind the banking board. So and, that is, no, 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 no. and that's what he's pointing at, too. <laughs> All right, Bishop Walls basketball. Here's the play. Now watch. Comes up and it hits the back of the banking board. That is out of bounds. The front sides, top and bottom, are inbounds, but the back is out of bounds. Walsh basketball and a walk is called on Ryan Steiner. DJ Jesse forces that walk. And again, that's the third turnover for Bishop Walsh. Unfortunately, as you see the turnover here, Steiner brings it up, just takes a little stroll, changes the pivot foot just slightly, and gets the travel call. This is Jesse, has a notion, won't pull the trigger, leaves it off for Salas. Salas inside, they find Hart, or Derma rather, off the glass, it's good. Boy, that was a good look inside. And Dermer did a nice job there getting away from Ryan Steiner on that baseline 1-3-1. One, one. Walsh breaks the pressure. Shot by Steiner's an air ball. And the other side responds with a derisive chant of air ball. Fields into the paint off the glass. Okay. No, no basket. Offensive foul is called. And Ryan Steiner is the man taking the body. Now here it comes. Dermer with a good feed. No look to Fields. But Steiner set up shop in the paint. And the foul committed by Mike Fields, his first team foul number one. And there you see it again from another angle. 
We are tied at two. Six minutes left to go in the first quarter as Walsh breaks the pressure. They find number 41, Chris Klukas, on the baseline, and he's fouled on the way up. And found again by Mike Fields, number 21. Very quickly, Fields, as you see it up here, Fields trying to go for the swat, came across and got the arm. Fields picking up his second, and that's the second team foul. Very quickly, Adam Whitaker will come to the scorer's table, and he'll jump in the lineup for Mike Fields. And he has brought some quality minutes off that bench for Toby Eric's campers. He has been what Toby has called several times this season, his spark plug, the man that they bring in, the energizer. Chris Klukas, the left-handed shot is short. And if you see this again, Klukas did not get far enough. He was too far back on his heels as he shot that, trying to stretch himself out on the toes. That's why that came up short. The second one is up, and it's good this time. And there, that was nice and easy. Mitchell Walsh goes back out in front, three to two. A little pressure in the backcourt. It's broken easily by Salas as he goes right by his man to Jesse. Spots a three, no. Rebound to Todd Logan. Logan looks for help. The ball is intercepted by Jesse on the baseline. Leaves it off intended for Adam Whitaker. Knocked out of bounds. Alert defensive play by number 11, Ryan Nelson. Now watch, Ryan Nelson here sees this coming. Here's a nice pass by Jesse, and no look inside. But as we come back to live play, Nelson watched the ball and didn't watch DJ Jesse. Bounce pass on the baseline, off the glass. It's good, and he's fouled. Holy cow, going hard Todd to the hole. Logan. Todd Logan will catch the foul. We're going to count it. Now watch. Good inbound pass, lead pass as Logan goes right to the hole, protects the ball with his body, and coming in underneath was Mike Harvey. So Harvey with the foul, his first team foul number three. So Logan in search of a three-point play. He completes it, and it is six to two in favor of Bishop Walsh. And who to thunk it? City early game. Going. And early going, though. City game. This is Whitaker to Harvey. Harvey on the left side to Whitaker. Has a notion, won't pull the trigger. Now he tries a leaping leaner, no good. Rebound to Jason Helmstetter. Helmstetter double teamed in the backcourt. They get it to Nelson, back to Helmstetter. He'll break the timeline. Straight up the middle, and his pass is tipped out of bounds. It will remain Bishop Walsh basketball. Good hands here by Mike Harvey as he just gets his hand on the ball. Tips out what might have been an easy bucket underneath for Walsh. Logan to Keedy inbound. In a hurry. Now they do. They get it in to Helmstetter. And it's flooded out of bounds by DJ Jesse well, you, with authority. You talk about the Lonely Hearts being rejected on that play. Oh Look at this. Here comes a fly swatter. We're at number 25. Ba boom And out of bounds. Walsh keys the inbounds again. And it's intercepted by Jesse. He goes all the way. And he is fouled on the layup. Good foul there by Ryan Nelson. He prevented the bucket. If you're going to foul, prevent the bucket. Exactly right, John. That's what you're taught. And that's what Ryan Nelson did. And here it just came down. Again, no malice intended here. It just came in across the hands. The ball off the bottom of the banking board, and DJ Jesse will be on the line. He'll have two free ones. Their first foul on Nelson, number one on the team. The other night he had 14 against Fort Hill. But Six he did not three. shoot, John, he didn't shoot particularly well from the free throw line and through three quarters. Tuned it up a little more in the second half. He went two for five from the line the other night. Second one is up and good. Six to four. Pressure on the inbounds. Broken. Very nicely done, and the ball is kicked by D.J. Jesse. Bishop Walsh moved the ball very nicely on that particular foray up the court. And Logan there, I think, was looking for a pass that wasn't there. He had a lane and probably could have gone to the hole himself, just trying to force it through. Walsh basketball in the front court. They haven't gotten it in yet. Now they do. Out front to go to Helmstetter. Helmstetter all the way down the paint, leaves it off. And in and out and in. Is number 41, Chris Klukas. Klukas again, close to a three second. Klukas just got the ball high enough to fall over the rim. And the ball goes off of Darmer's hands out of bounds. And it will be Bishop Walsh basketball. Now the game, maybe playing a little tight here in the early going? A little. Right there, you see it. Eight to four, the campers trail by four. And a turnover is forced by the Allegheny defense there, Jamie. The defense used the sideline as another defender. And that was DJ Jesse on the sideline, John, that forced him out. No contact made. But Ryan Nelson not able to get around the big guy. Whitaker to Keedy inbounds to Jesse. This is Salas. Salas back to Jesse. He leaves it off. 
And now to Whitaker, down the paint, off the glass, it's no good. Tip! It's good by Jesse, I believe. Holy cow, he went right up over top, no contact. I don't know which Spartan player that was, but Jesse with a great touch tip. Eight to six, a two on one break, and it's broken up by number 32, Jake Dermer. They had a two on one. Here's the two on one, broken up very nicely. Got to see the tail end of that. John into the lineup is Steve Friend, number 31 for Allegheny. He had a par excellent performance against Fort Hill. And now Logan runs into, or Nelson rather, runs into his old man. The shot is blocked out of bounds. And that, that, was just, that play was nothing but ugly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was out of control going up there. Just sort of, as you watch here, just sort of chucked the ball as he was flailing down. Walsh basketball. Helm setter for three, no good. Rebound to Logan. Logan down the paint. The shot's put up, no good. And now the ball's loose. It's picked up by Bishop Walsh. Helmstetter. Wow. Whistle blows, though. And see the foul. I think Helmstetter might have gotten away with a walk as he shuffled back behind the three-point line. The foul, however, is going to be on Steve Friend of Allegheny. I'll tell you watch though, here. As he just scoots back, he got away with one there. But I'll tell you one thing about Allegheny. They have 15 fouls to give from that big man position. Friend with it. Absolutely right. Friend with his first. Team foul number four. Helmstetter out front to Nelson. Nelson looks for help. He finds it at Logan. Logan down the paint. He leaves it off. And now three seconds. Three seconds is called as the shot was put up by Chris Klukas. Yeah, you can kind of see that coming. Walsh doing a nice job flooding the lane. But uh, you get too many in there, you end up with a parking violation. This is Salas with three and a half to go. Well, again, he works it in the front court. Dermer to Friend on the baseline, off the glass, it's good. Steve Friend with a big basket, but I'll tell you what, Robbie Rupenkamp did a nice job stopping the ball on the baseline. And he shot it up, no good, and Whitaker skies high for the rebound. Logan missed it. Whitaker race horses into the front court. Oh, nice pass to Salas. He misses the layup, and Logan Steps over his body into the front court, comes the Spartans. Down the lane, no good by Klukas. Helm set on the rebound, he has his pockets picked by Whitaker. Two Whitaker two break. goes behind his back and it comes right to Jesse, to Salas. It's good for what ball movement by Allegheny. And what an outstanding pass, unselfish pass by DJ Jesse as he simply felt where Salas was. Here comes a backward violation. And All right, now watch DJ's head and where the ball goes. He is not looking at Denny Salas. He knows where he is, and the defense bit went toward Jesse, and Salas had a bunny layup. 10 to 8 in favor of the uh, campers. That's how you spell teamwork. Jesse has it in the corner out front to Salas. Outside of the arc, inside to go to Dermer. Bounce pass to Friend, and his shot is good. Good alert play by Friend. Again, Jake Dermer, outstanding assist. Four-point camper lead, and the Spartans lose the handle on the ball but it was knocked out of bounds by Allegheny. We'll see it here. Adam Whitaker might have got away with a foul. Yeah. All right, Steiner in the backcourt. Leaves it off for Helmstetter. Helmstetter picked up by Jesse. Spins on the cross to half court strike. We go down on the baseline. Now to Klukas in the paint, off the glass. No good, Klukas on the rebound, it's good! Got the second timer. Boy, that, that's good persistent board work there. It certainly is. Klukas knew he had that underneath and just too hard on the first try, John. 12 to 10 in favor of Allegheny. Joe Coming Carter up. wants his defense back a little farther in that lane. Coming up on the minute and a half mark, and a walk is called on Denny Salas. 12 to 10, Allegheny leads by two, a minute 50 left to go in the first quarter. Very hotly contested city game on commercial video services. Everything you'd expect in this kind of game. And the ball's almost picked off by Whitaker, and he rams his man. Well, you know, this, they'll read more into that than there is. Whitaker was going for the ball, yes, and it was just a nice play on the part of Robbie Rupenkamp. Look, and just Whitaker couldn't stop. That's all. It's got a bit of a pretty nice little hit check. That's right. <laughs> So Winnegar picks up the foul, his first, and that's team foul number five on the campers. And that could be dangerous, John, only in the first quarter. Logan goes all the way out the glass, it's good. We're tied at 12. As Salas brings the ball across half court to Whitaker inside the arc, leaves it off to Salas. 
Salas shakes and bakes, puts up the shot. It's an air ball. Friend on the rebound, and the whistle blows underneath. Let's see if we got the foul on Steve Friend. He came in, and it is on Steve Friend as he came in against Todd Logan. Friend will pick it up. Now watch it coming in here. Salas comes up with a ball, kind of off balance shot. Friend had good position in here, but Logan just came in around him. So the foul is on Steve Friend, his second. That's team foul number six. We're still in the first quarter. Pressure in the backcourt, and DJ Jesse fouls Robbie Rufenkamp. And now we're going to shoot. Jesse will pick up the foul, his first. Team foul number seven. And with 1.17 to go, 9.17 to go in the first half, the Spartans are in the bonus. And again, Jesse, you're just trying to make something happen. And you know, this Bishop Walsh team, for as many big guys as they have, and we're talking about the Rupin camps, talking about the Klukases, and Steiner is a pretty fair size, Logan pretty fair size. You see your Kelly Service Auto Service scoreboard. They handle the ball very well. And Kelly Auto Service is featuring the Navigator 800, the all-season radio that holds the road in any weather. And best of all, it carries a 60,000-mile warranty. 60,000 miles? 60,000. That's what it says right here. You've got to believe it. And we're ready for the second one. It's up no good this time. And Mike Harvey clears the boards. He looks for help and finds it in Denny Salas. And John Walsh takes the first, their first lead of the game. This is Whitaker. Looks inside to Jesse. Turn around in the paint. No good. Strong rebound by Robbie Rufenkamp. Here comes Helmstetter into the front court. Racehorses puts up a wild shot on the baseline. Almost got it. Ooh. Whitaker on the rebound. Across the timeline. Leaves it off for Salas. Salas wheels, deals, finds Jesse. He pulls up from there, and it's short. Rebound to Steiner. Steiner looks for help. He's trapped. He finally finds it in Logan. Logan has his pass tip. Comes back to Logan. Jesse on him. Goes across the timeline to Steiner. Steiner looks for help. He finally takes it himself. Leaves it off. And his shot put up. No good. Rebound. To number 33, Scott Robinette. Here comes Salas into the front court to Jesse. Off the glass, and a block is called on Bishop Walsh as it is Ryan Steiner. Steiner picks up the foul coming down here. Again, Salas, another good pass. Jesse going right to the hole. Oh, that's close. That's close. But Steiner gets the call on the blocking foul. His first team foul, only the second team foul on the Spartans. 18 seconds left to go. And it's up and short. 13 to 12 in favor of the Bishop Hall Spartans. There you see some of the partisan Spartan crowd. Joe Carter telling his team, look at the clock. This is what we got left. And it's short again. Rebound taken away by Whitaker off the glass. No good. And now Rupenkamp clears the boards. He outlets to Steiner. Steiner. Runs it in the front court. Bounce pass over to Klukas. With they five. try to go to Logan on the baseline. It's knocked out of bounds. Six seconds left to go in the first quarter. An action-packed first quarter. This is Steiner. Pump fake spins, and Robinette fouls him with four seconds. That's left to go in the quarter. There's just something that, that Scott Robinette's going to have to learn. John, in a play like that, all Scott Robinette has to do is put straight up on the ball. He's got Steiner oh, almost by a foot. My goodness. What's the replay here? They get it into the paint. Good job there by Spartan. Now Scott just has to get position, go straight up. He doesn't need to reach in this, this fall. All right, at the free throw line is Ryan Steiner. His club leads by one, 13 to 12. The coaches will tell you, this is... You don't want to give a team opportunity to score with no time going off the clock. And it's up in short. A little bit of, little bit of tightness on both clubs here from the free throw line. Second one is up and in and out. Robin in on the rebound to Jesse. Two seconds, one. He lets it go from half court. Oh, almost goes in. So we have completed one quarter of play. It's typical city basketball action. And after one, it is Bishop Walsh, 13, Allegheny 12. Back with second quarter right after this.
Welcome back. Here you see the Allegheny cheerleaders entertaining the crowd. 13 to 12 is our score. The homestanding Bishop Walsh Spartans lead by one. Here's your first quarter stat, John. For Allegheny from the floor, they shot five of 18, two for four from the stripe. For the Walsh Spartans, five of 14 from the floor, and they went three for seven from the stripe. There will be Allegheny ball to start the second quarter. Referees for tonight's game are Gary Hogger and Terry Turbin. As Salas brings the ball with a walk across the half court strike. This is Jesse back to Salas. Now they go to Mike Fields back into the ball game. In the corner, this is Harvey. Harvey looks inside, goes back outside, cross court to Salas. Inside to Dermer. He turns around in the paint, got it! There are a few players, John, that can force the ball as well as Jake Dermer can. 14-13, Allegheny up by one. Allegheny man-to-man -man defense. Steiner works it in the front court to Helmstetter. Helmstetter is picked up by Salas. Goes down the paint. Shot is blocked. Dermer Here got comes it. Salas. Layup is good. Three point. Camper lead. 16-13. Logan in the front court. Out front to go to Rupenkamp. Back to Logan. Now they find Steiner. Pump fakes. Gives it off to Klukas. Klukas back to Rupenkamp. Quickly they swing it to Logan on the baseline. It's no good. Jesse one-handed rebound. He outlets to Harvey. He runs it down. Goes into the paint. Layup is good. Good play by Mike Harvey. And really a good play by Robbie Rupenkamp. Not to foul, but Joe Carter not happy with it. Calls a timeout. 6.46 left to go. In the first quarter, five-point camper lead. Allegheny 18, Bishop Walls 13. We'll be back with more second quarter action right after this. get their turn to entertain the crowd. John, I gotta get, the, get this from you, confirm or deny this rumor that you're the heir apparent to Jack Fleming's job with the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> I only wish. <laughs> uh, Myron and I, I think, could, uh, could get along. Sure. Hey, if you work with me, you can work with anybody. <laughs> you said that I didn't. <laughs> Jamie, you and I have gone back, oh my, seeming, seemingly forever now. All right, Bishop Ball's basketball in the front court. This is Logan. Check that, Nelson, now to Logan. On the baseline, off the glass, it's good! Boy, what a pretty first step. And that's right, that's exactly right, John. That's what did it there, the first step by Logan. Blows past Mike Fields. Three point, Camper lead, 18-15. For Salas, rather, watching an interesting matchup as Dermer and Mike Fields were going at it on the other end of the floor. Fields for three, top of the key, got it! Oh, nothing but the bottom of the net for Mike Fields. Back up to a six point lead. 21-15, the first tray of the game. Bishop Walls basketball in the front court. Logan on fields. They find a cutting. Number 25, Jason Helmstetter. His shot is blocked. Here comes the campers. Jesse, oh, what a move. He scores, and it's up now to a seven, or an eight-point lead, rather. 23-15. to 15. Here look, come the Spartans right look back. Look at this. The shot is blocked. There's Jesse. You talk about pretty on that replay. DJ, just a thing of beauty going up, but let's talk about this. Jake Dermer with two big rejections already. And here's the play coming at you here into the front court of what? Bishop Walsh. At the free throw line is Jason Helmstetter. Toby Eric has a word with his coaching staff. Shot up, no good. Boy, both teams are just having a horrendous night from the charity strike. And the Dr. Paul Lynn scoreboard, general dental care for the entire family located on 115 South Center Street in Cumberland. Dr. Lynn would like to wish good luck to all our local teams. That's the second one's up and good, 23 to 16. As Salas race horses across the timeline. They go to Darmer. He spins in the paint, it's no good. Tip up and good by Mike Harvey. Super weak side rebound by the campers. 25-16. 
Hampers up. And the ball knocked away by Dermer. However, Klukas gets it right back. He leaves it off for Helmstetter. It goes on a bounce. Touched last, apparently, by Salas, <laughs> judging from the reaction. No, no, no. <laughs> Helmstetter might have gotten his toe in on that one. We can see that one coming back. But it is Spartan basketball. Todd Logan will do the inbounds honor to Helmstetter. He trips as he comes to receive the pass. Maybe some loose floorboards down there. Leaves it off for Logan. Logan to Ryan Nelson. He pump fakes, pops, and rolls it hard. A victory lap, a half of a victory lap, actually. Good play by Nelson, too, as he got Denny Salas with that head fake. Got him in the air and out of position. And gave himself the opportunity for an open shot. 25-18, 4.57 on a turning clock in quarter number two. Into the circle goes Fields. It's an air ball, but Jesse there. He misses the shot, and it's still loose. Run down by uh, Harvey, and his pass is batted out of bounds by Bishop Walsh. Spartans make a couple of lineup changes. Ryan Steiner coming into the game. Also, Danny Harper, number 33. Going out will be Robbie Rupenkamp and number 25, Jason Helmstetter. As Danny Harper is in for his first action on the ball game, out front they swing it to Michael Fields. Back to Jesse. He spots a three. Left side, it's short. Rebound run down by Todd Logan. Quickly in the front court is Steiner. He goes all the way. Layup is good. And that's great concentration by Ryan Steiner. As he had the ball nearly batted out of his hands, still kept his presence of mind and scored the two. 25-20, a five-point. Allegheny can't lead over the homestanding Bishop Walsh Barton. And a left is called out front on Dennis Salas. That is only the fourth turnover in this first half from the Allegheny Campers. Bishop Walsh has turned it over eight times. However, the Campers have only converted two of those. As Logan brings the ball up across the timeline. He's picked up out front by Fields, works off of the pick. Down low to go to Lucas off the glass. It's good. Lucas, a good move. Went around the Camper player, but a good pick set there by Danny Harper on his old Little League baseball teammate, Mike Fields. <laughs> Three-point camper lead, 25-22. Bishop Walsh is in the bonus. They have been since the first quarter. Allegheny has yet to reach the bonus. That yeah, could become a factor. There's only uh, two team fouls on the Spartans. Allegheny ball in the front court. This is Fields, back to Harvey. Inside they go. And Donner is... Now they're saying they a whistle. Two I heard a whistle. Three. You heard a whistle. Yeah, somebody had a whistle out there. Now a foul is whistled. Now they're looking for a three-second. benches in a <laughs> uh, You and I both heard that, and everybody on the floor heard that whistle. Joe everybody Carter's stopped. Going, said, everybody oh, stopped. Stop. Well, let's straighten this out and find out what's going on here. The upshoot of it now is, and here it is. The watch everybody stop. As Cosell used to like to say, <laughs> there was that whistle. DJ Jesse at the free throw line, knocks home the first one. Second one, no good. 26-22. Here comes Nelson into the front court. Nelson still with it. Out front to go. Logan, no. Rebound, Lucas. Looks for help. He's hacked. He goes into the lane. It's no good. It's short. And here comes Fields with it across the timeline. He goes all the way. Scoop shot is no good. Oh, my. And off the rebound is the friend. 28-22. Friend putting that six-foot-eight frame to work. And now the ball thrown out of bounds. Allegheny basketball. Turnover number nine on the Spartans. Now, and we'll go back to that play. Both the officials begged off. Both of them went, ah, we didn't do any whistle. But everybody heard it. And now back court as Salas did not get back into the front court as he got the inbounds from DJ Jesse. A little bit of a sloppy turnover there by the campers. And the Spartans take over with 3.09 to go in a half. And number 31, Robbie Rubenkamp, directly into your picture, keyed the inbounds. Here comes Helmstetter across the timeline, going on Salas to Nelson, top of the key. This is Rubenkamp on the wing. Looks for help. Finds it in Nelson. Nelson goes into the paint. His shot is in and out. Rebound, 5-4, knocked out of bounds by Klukas. All right, this is Mike Fields on the replay. Now watch this going, splits the difference. Doesn't get this shot, but goes to the scoop. He did everything but score on that one. Salas across the timeline, finds Fields. This is Dermot. 
Inside they go. Friend, turnaround is good on the baseline. Yeah, you look at Steve Friend and they say, this kid's a rail. Boy, he just, he shouldn't be able to do these things, but he does. Right on the inbounds and a foul is whistled on Dennis Salas. 30 to 22 in favor of the Allegheny Campers. Salas picks up his first. Gets a word of encouragement from Toby Eric, or, or a word anyway. And as you so correctly pointed out, John, the Spartans are going to be on the strike for one and one. At the free throw line. Here's Jason Homesteader. Well, I'll tell you, the noise level in this gym is unbelievable. You gotta love it there. You just gotta love it. It's no good. And a rebound to Klukas. Turn around in the paint off the glass. No, but Steiner is there to clean the boards off. Brian Steiner has been such a great compliment to Chris Klukas coming off that weak side. 30 to 24. The Spartans will not go away. And you got to give him credit for that. Inside to go, the friend, he got it. And that's tough, he's going to go for that mismatch. As long as it's there, friend has uh, Steiner on him. And he's Steiner's done. giving away almost eight, eight, nine inches on this. And now the turnover, the defense caused that. This is friend again, back to Jesse off the glass. It's good. The defense came up with those two points, and now the whistle blows. And it's Allegheny Camper basketball again. All right, let's look at it again. Ball tipped by Salas and just fingernail. There's the heel right there as Rupenkamp put the heel outside. Ten point, Allegheny lead, a minute 55 left to go in the first half. On the end belt, they go to Jesse. No. Rebound to Lucas. He leaves it off to Rupenkamp. Across the timeline, his pass is knocked out of bounds by Jesse. Boy, the camper defense in that full court, John, they are just swarming all over the ball. And they have a tremendous athlete here in D.J. Jesse. Absolutely. Oh, we mentioned that earlier, too, because this, this is a team just loaded with athletes. Klukas goes all the way. And that's what they look for Greg Klukas to do. Take command, get those shots when he can get them. 34-26, Allegheny leads. Bishop Walls, minute and a half left to go in the first half. Friend on the baseline, he's hit three. Three straight on the baseline on either side of the basket. That's eight points in this quarter, 12 in the game for Steve Friend. Helm center rumbles into the front court to Klukas. Bounce dribble off the glad no. Take the lid off. My goodness. And the whistle blows. I thought Buck Surrey was going off the glass on that one. On a turnover. And it is Allegheny basketball. The foul on the offensive boards is going to be called that, okay. on Chris Klukas. Okay. Picks up his first team foul, only the third team foul. Allegheny basketball, either way you look at it. Steve Friend, by the way, John, is six for seven from the floor. Wow. Inside to go to Robinette this time, and it's no good, and the ball is tipped out of bounds. Touched last by D.J. Jesse. That brings Toby Eric up off the bench. He can't believe it. <laughs> Walsh can make a quick lineup change if they can get it in. Andy Titchnell will not be able to come in. He'll come in for next stop. Pressure in the backboard. It's broken easily. It's a three-on-two break if they get away from each other. And now Logan, the air ball on a three-point shot. Whitaker into the ball game. He goes all the way. Layup is good. 38-26, 40 seconds, pressure again. Stolen by Whitaker, he kicks it over to DJ Jesse. Wheels, deals, and the whistle blows, and he is fouled. And Adam Whitaker is holding his hand, he's hurt. He's hurt, he comes to the near sideline. The pinky finger, ring and pinky finger on his right hand. As he watched there, when he blocked that ball, John, we went up. My son, Brandon, broke his finger doing this once, went up, and instead of getting the palm of his hand on yes. the ball, got it, hit it on the, the front ends of his yes. fingers, on the that, fingertips. That hurts so bad. That hurts. I, I've had that happen to me. There it is again, where he went up and just got his fingertips on that ball, and I said, Brandon broke his finger doing that playing basketball. Whitaker leaves it off for Robinette. He loses the handle. Whitaker picks up the foul. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Toby Eric is not happy. He is really exercised about something going on inside. Bishop Walls comes back to the free throw line. They trail by 12, 38-26. 24 seconds left to go in this first half. It's been an exciting first half. Absolutely. Ryan Steiner at the free throw line. And it's up and good.
38-27. We get it back to the 10-point barrier here. With only 27 ticks to go. Second one is up no good this time. Rebound fought for. And the Spartans have it. And Tichnell rolls it home. Andy Tichnell. And they've got it under the 10-point barrier. 38-29. Nine-point lead. Camper should play for the last shot here. Jesse with eight. Pops it. It's no good. Rebound to Roof and Camp over to Logan. Four seconds. Three, two. Stolen by Jesse. At the buzzer. No. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. Well, that'll let this crowd out. Wow. So, a rock'em sock'em first half in terms of action comes to a close. And after the first 16 minutes of play, it is Allegheny 38. Bishop Walsh, 29. Stay tuned for halftime activity. That's coming up right after this. All right, a fresh eight minutes goes up onto the scoreboard clock. There you see the score. And it will be Bishop Walsh basketball to start play here in the third quarter. And as we have time, we'll get you caught up on your halftime stats. This is Helmstetter out front. And Klukas banging a bit with Dermer in the paint. Now he backs off of him. Helmstetter finds Logan. Stolen. Oh, what a nice steal by Mike Fields. Layup is good. Boy, he just picked his pocket clean on that one. Oh, Larchney on the hardwood. Oh, my. 40 to 29, Allegheny starting to assume control here. They started to in the latter stages of quarter number two. Out front is Robbie Rupenkamp. This is Helmstetter. Helmstetter as Lucas and Dermer collided. And now for three, left side, no good by Steiner. Mike Fields on the rebound and the whistle blows. And we'll check the call. The foul is on number 25, Jason Helmstetter. His first team foul number one here in the second half. All right, your halftime stats looking as we see the foul coming up here on the rebound play. Homestead are just coming right up over the back of Mike Fields. And we'll get to them as tonight. time permits. Tonight. Sometime. <laughs> Sometime before we leave the air tonight. This is Harvey. He moves inside the arc, pops it and drops it. How do you like that for the big guy? They dared him, he took it. 42-29. Pressure once again. Broken this time by Helmstead. Helmstetter to Rupenkamp. They swing it over to Logan. In the corner, this is Steiner. Got it for three. And I'll tell you what, Ryan Steiner did a nice job of getting lost in the Allegheny Camper defense. Back to a 10-point lead, 42-32. Camper's up by 10. This is Salas to Fields. Back to Salas. Moves in. Oh, what a pass to Dermer. A bullet pass down the lane. Nifty inside. What a good play. Denny Salas has such good vision on the inside. And now Terry Turbin calls Gary Hogger over for a quick conference. As the officials confer briefly. Must have been a hair out of place for Gary. Basket was <laughs> made. Here we go. All right. Rupin Camp. Key the inbounds. They get it in to Steiner. He's double teamed. He's trapped in the corner. They finally find Logan. Logan into the front court, leaves it off for Klukas, pump fakes three times, and now three, three seconds. seconds is called. Three, three pump fakes, one, I guess one uh, second for each pump fake. Yep, if you're going toward the basket, you can take some time in there. You won't get that call if you're actually moving toward the basket and going to shoot. But just if you're up there trying to get something in the air, you got the three point, or the three second call. 44-32, Allegheny leads by a dozen. Jesse, turn around, and he's called for the walk. Couple of stats real quick in that first half. Bishop Walsh turned the ball over 12 times, and the campers put on a surge late. They converted six of those 12 into points. Once again, pressure in the backcourt. Rupenkamp across the timeline to Logan. Nice field of a bounce pass to Klukas. Reverse layup is good. Good play by Klukas. They almost gave it to him too late down low, John. Back to a 10-point lead, 44-34. And Logan made a nice pickup of that pass on, off the short hop. They go to Dermer, to the campers. He spins to Jesse, he loses the ball. And now 
a double team in the backcourt. Here come the Spartans. Now as the pressure is broken, cross court. This is Helmstetter for three. No good. Rebound is spot four, taken away by Dunner. Quickly outlets to Jesse. Jesse, oh, off the glass, no good. Seems like every time that young man goes up, you await to see something wondrous. <laughs> This is Steiner in the front court to Helmstetter. Pump face on the baseline. And an offensive foul is called on Jason Helmstetter. Again, it was DJ Jesse. And what an athlete. You mentioned this in the first half. Now watch DJ here. Face up, get position, stand still, and let Helmstetter run right into him for the foul. For Helmstetter picking up his second personal. That's team foul number two in the second half. This is Cyrus pounding the ball across the timeline. Going on Steiner to Jesse on the wing. Jesse drop pass to Dermer, and he got it. What good give and go there. You know, this is what this begins to more and more look like. There's an Allegheny Camper team that is just in tune with each other. 46-34. I know that sounds a little Shirley McLean-ish, but you have to understand what I mean. And Klukas bangs into his defender and knocks one home. Just lowered the uh, shoulder there just a bit. If they let you give the body, you take the body. Yep. 46-36. And this, and this is just within firing range for the Spartans. Jesse, outside of the arc. Harvey bangs off of a man down low. Fields pulls up. No good. Lucas on the rebound. Looks for help. Finds it in Logan. Steiner will bring it across the timeline. He fakes a bounce pass, leaves it off for Logan. Out front, back to Steiner. Outside of the arc. This is Helmstetter between the circles. He's picked up by Salas. Joe Carter wanted something underneath. They didn't quite get it when he wanted it. Logan on the wing to Rupenkamp. They swing it over to Steiner. He pulls up for three. Got it! And won't be it to the campers as Steiner begins to find that measure. 46-39. Steiner two for three in the second half. Both of those three-pointers. And the campers call a timeout with your Kelly Auto Service scoreboard. Kelly Auto Service is featuring the Voyager 1000 Touring Edition. It's the idea of marriage of luxury and performance. Find the Voyager at Kelly Auto Service and you'll see that it's warranted for an incredible 60,000 miles. We have fields right now, right? Or 60K, whichever you prefer. Make Salas go left. You think the hoops are going to When Dermer screams on the ball, they're going to screen the ball. There's talk on that as we go on the side. You just about a step up. <laughs> Who's got sound? He does. Like as he gives run. the ball up, he sag off and gives some help. Okay? Let's go. Hey, guys, we're right there. We're right there now. Let's go. Pressure's on this route. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. That's an outstanding shot, getting right in the huddle of the Bishop Bulls part. And as Joe Carter says, you're right there, you're right there, and definitely they are right there, 46-39. You got a couple of seconds right now. Here's your first half scoring. Steve Friend led the all scorers with 12 points in the first half, going six for seven. DJ Jesse with eight, Whitaker with two, Salas with four, Fields with three, Dermer with four, and Harvey with four. We'll get your Spartans halftime scoring in just a moment. Fields on the wing, out front to go to Dermer. To Jesse on the baseline, stops, pops short. Steiner on the rebound. Here come the Spartans. This is Nelson. Nelson Rupin can't put in the circles. Over to Steiner, up high. Now to go to Logan. Again, Carter wants something underneath. They swing it over on the wing to Nelson. He looks inside, he has to go back outside. Well, Steve Friend is such an impediment inside. And Jesse knocks the ball out of bounds as he and Steiner, they're going for it. Now they say it will be camp for basketball, so Steiner touched it last. All right, here's your Bishop Walls lineup at the half. Chris Lucas led them in scoring with 11. Ryan Steiner with five. Andy Chisnell with two. Rupin Camp and Helmsterter with one apiece. Logan with seven. Ryan Nelson with two. Camp for basketball in the front court. Dunner between the circles. He directs traffic. Odd that Denny Salas is spending so much time underneath. And friend is fouled by Robbie Rupin Camp as a pair of 31. He's one out of that time. Well, Robbie Rubenkamp picks up his first, team foul number three, here in the second half. There you see your score, seven-point camper advantage. And remember, just as you pointed out, John, Joe Carter told his team, you're still in this, you're right there. Friend off the baseline, no, gets his own rebound, puts it up and in. 
Steve Friend is just rounding into such. And now it was on the break. Lucas is Oops. five. <laughs> As draped all over him was Jake Dermott. That looked like a Lambert foul. For he, wore, he wore him like a mantle. <laughs> For Dermer, his first as you watch Jake come in. And, it, you know, it was a good pump fake right underneath there because Lucas got him up in the air and just wasn't sure, Dermer wasn't sure which way he was going. I'll tell you, Dermer came down hard. Jake picks up his first team foul number one. And it's short again. Chris Lucas. At the free throw line, he went one for two from the stripe in the first half. And a lot, a lot of shots are banging off the front of the rim. On both ends of the floor. Adam Whitaker into the ball game. And this one's good. Eight point ball game. As Whitaker will bring the ball up against mild pressure put on by Homesteader. Race horses passed him on the baseline. Got it. Go coast to coast. He saw an opening and he took advantage of it. This time, Homesteader behind the back. And a block is called, and I think Homesteader got away with one there. Might have. Oh, we'll check this We'll see if we have it on the, re on the replay. Jake Dermer's going to pick up the foul. You watch it here. Now watch the arm behind the back. Just watch a little push. But before uh, Helmstetter and, and um, Whitaker came together. So Dermer picks up his second team foul number two. Dermer goes out in place of Mike Harvey for the Allegheny Campers. And on the line for two is Chris Lucas. A candy shot is good. So you got to give the Spartans credit. They are hanging tough in this ball game. They are keeping it within around the 9 to 11 point uh, deficit. And you go into the fourth quarter, that can mean a lot. Absolutely. And campers outscored Bishop Walsh in that second quarter, 26-16, to take that huge lead. But Allegheny has found Bishop Walsh to be a very tenacious foe. And off the miss, Sellers brings it across the timeline. And they find Friend on the baseline, no good. Boy, he was hitting those shots in the first half. Whitaker tips the ball out of bounds, but he has not been able to convert in the second half. One of the difference, differences in that is Steve Friend has to contend with Chris Klukas instead of Ryan Stoney. Now that's taken nothing away from Steve Friend. He's played remarkable basketball. A little difference in the matchups. Lucas. Arms Logan out front in the circle, down the paint. Scoop shot is no good. Oh, Long rebound run down by Jesse. Jesse off that two field, or Salas rather, off his hands. And in frustration, he grabs the ball with both hands and just pounds it off the wall. That is unusual. Danny Salas has probably the softest hands you're going to find in this Allegheny team. So on the turnover, this ball basketball. They are within 10. They are at 9. Toby wanted a walk, didn't get one. Helmstetter, oh my! Good shot, pretty, pretty shot. 50 to 43. I won't be surprised. And now over after he palmed the ball. He palmed the ball to Denny Salas and Gary Hogger Pattern. Short turnover in the second half. And then for the Spartans, number 45, Andy Tichno. Lucas comes out and wants you to come under this ball just a little bit, right there. And he calls the carry on. You get that in the NBA. Right. Of course, they don't really play basketball in the NBA. <laughs> Todd Logan across the timeline to Danny Harper back in the ball game. And they swing it back to Logan. Logan stops, pops, no. Rebound friend, and he is fouled on the grab. It's either Tichno or Harper. A lottery foul. And Tichno picks it up. His first team foul number four. You know, Steve Frank gets away with one here though, because they tell you, to always tell your big man, never bring the ball down that low. Yes. And he did. Tichno last on, but commits the foul. Seven point, Camper lead, 50 to 43, under a minute to go in the third quarter, as Salas is really being hounded by Ryan Nelson, and he forces the turnover. Ultimately, here comes Homesteader, and his shot's no good as he and Jesse collide, and now the whistle is blown out front. Here's the shot right here, a little body contact underneath there. No call on the play as it come down with a rebound, and coming in with a touch foul. And getting called for it is Ryan Nelson, number 11, picks up his second, team foul number five. 40 seconds left to go, third quarter action, 50 to 43, in favor of the visiting Allegheny campers. Salas out, field in. Camper basketball, this is Jesse up the far sideline. You better pick up Jesse very quickly. Fields between the circles, 32 seconds. To Whitaker, Whitaker. Finds Harvey all alone, got it. That's 
Outstanding play by the camper offense. Snuck everybody on the right side. Harvey came off the weak side all by himself. Jesse knocks the ball out of bounds. It will be Spartan basketball. Helmstetter back into the lineup, as is Chris Lucas. Harper to key the inbounds, and they have Harvey on the inbounder. They have the height advantage on the inbounds. Defending it, that is. Steve he's Brent. all over him. You now we got a official timeout. As there's uh, debris on the court, it appears. Looks Somebody like threw something. It coin. looks like a coin. That, that's uncalled for. Toby Eric goes over to pick it up. I won't say this because I got in trouble earlier this year. <laughs> I haven't gotten in trouble yet. <laughs> All right, Harper to keep the inbounds. And Helmstead has a little trouble running it down in the backcourt. He's picked up by Jesse, 16 seconds, 13 as he crosses the timeline. Nobody on the right side. Now Spartans on the starts to move. He spins, and the block is called on Jesse. DJ Six was just seconds. Give and ground, give and ground, give and ground. Helmstetter made a quick move on the inside. But DJ. you notice right here they're isolating on him. The fouls committed right there as Helmstetter put the shoulder right into it. And they say he was on the floor, so it will be an inbound play. Six seconds. Jesse with his second. To Helmstetter spots a three with five. Got it! Oh boy! And that will end the quarter. We have come to the end of three quarters of play. It is Allegheny 52, Bishop Walsh 46. Back with an exciting fourth quarter of play right after this. you are. You've got to play defense. Words of wisdom from Toby Eric. It's a six-point game. 52-46. Here's your third quarter stats, John. From the floor, Allegheny shot 7 of 11, no free throws. And in the third quarter for Bishop Wall, they shot 6 of 13, 2 for 4 from the line. Bishop Wall outscored Allegheny 17 to 14. Jesse leaves it off for Garner. Garner, double team, gets it out front to Fields. Fields now two solid between the circles. Picked up by Logan. Protected. Uh, Jeff Hardo in the ball game. And this is Dermer. Turnaround partially blocked. The ball's loose. And let's see. It'll be long to the campers. All right. It was Fields and Harper going at it. Well, there's been some good matchups. Good defense offense matchups in this game. Very entertaining ball game. Glad you're with us on commercial video services. Dermer had a notion how he pulls it inside. Stops, pops, it's short, and the whistle blows on the rebound. And they're pointing directly at Jason Helmstetter. And he will pick up the foul, as we see it here on the replay. He's coming in, just got a little piece of uh, Steve Friend. But Helmstetter, John, picks up his third personal. That's team foul number six on the Spartans. Uh, up front they go to Jesse. He spots a three, top of the key, in and out. Rebound fought for Friend. Pump fakes off the glass. He got it. Well, right, Steve Friend has just been tenacity incorporated underneath for the campers tonight. 54-46. Campers up. By the way, DJ Jesse has not scored in the second half. Helms over for three. No. Rebound loose. Tarkas comes away with it off the glass and scores. Chris Lucas showing the strength and speed that he possesses. And interestingly enough, Jamie, as I look at the scoreboard, where Bishop Walsh was in the bonus for a considerable portion of the first half. Allegheny is in the bonus for a considerable portion of the second half. Fields. Three shot is blocked. 
And here comes the Spartans, two on two. And going all the way left is no good. Well, it's Todd Logan. He is fouled, I believe, by Friend. The foul on Steve Watts says now. If we could go back a little bit on this, Steve Logan does the job, or Todd Logan rather, does the job as he took fields from behind with that ball and then went coast to coast with it. Allegheny 54, Bishop Walsh 48, 649 left to go in this fourth quarter at the free throw line is Todd Logan. The foul on Steve Friend John is his third team foul number three. In and out, been the story of the ball game. Either short off the front of the winner, in and out. Now the Spartans crawl back. The one, here's the replay. We got the strip right from behind. And then Logan sees he's got a man in the middle, but he's got a lane. He's going to go all the way with it. Get fouled. Second one is good. 54 49. Allegheny up. 5 5. Jesse having a little trouble with the handle. And he finally gets it out. Logan's got a hand on that one, too. This is Fields. To Dermer. Dermer on the wing. Now he's swinging over to Fields. Fields back to Salas. The friend inside to go to Jesse off his hands. And they say it was touched last, however, by Bishop Walsh. It will remain Camper basketball. That was a good play by Logan, John, as he slid farther out toward the free throw line, sort of feeling DJ coming around him and denied the inbounds to GJ. Jesse off the inbounds. No. Rebound to Rupenkamp. And here comes Logan across the timeline to Rupenkamp. Back to Logan. Now they swing it over to Helmstetter. A little bumping and grinding on the low block. And Lucas and Friend going at it. We're going to have a push. And this could go, really, this could go either way. The foul over is going to be on Mike Fields. Here it comes. And watch a little hand check here by Mike Fields. Right there. There's the push. And he gets the whistle. Don't you just love those guys in the truck with those shots? That's so Rupin Rupenkamp has this shot blocked from behind by Dermer out of bounds. The near sideline jumps up. The fans out there saying, where's the foul? <laughs> Not there. Fields, by the way, John, picking up his third. Team foul number four. On the inbound, Steiner off the glass. No. Gets the rebound off the glass. It's good. 54-51. Hold on to your hats, folks. 547 in counting in this ball game. Both sides getting it up. Whooping it up. You see the crowd there. Both sides on their feet. Fields directs traffic out front. Salas, one of the best shake and bake men in the business. This is Fields. Outside of the arc. Put Dermer and Klukas down low. They're really going at it inside. Now, first pushing Klukas right out of bounds. Jesse, all the way. It's going and he's fouled. Oh, yeah. And listen to the cheer go up on the far sideline. That is DJ Jesse's first points in the second half. And if we see this replay, you know what's number 31, Steve Friend, as he did a number on Klukas, moved him almost outside the, uh, the playing surface. But watch, watch this, right here, 31 on your left, watch this. Friend is taking Klukas out to where he can only come in here and foul on the play. Free throw is in and out. The ball's tipped straight up, and it comes to Helmstetter. Helmstetter in the front court. Still with it, and he has the ball stripped by Dermer, but it comes to Steiner. Has third strip tonight by Dermer, plus two blocks. Helmstetter, Helmstetter and Salas out by the timeline. Five minutes to go. And a hits off for Helmstetter, but it comes right to Steiner. Well, rather be lucky than good. <laughs> oh, my. Rupenkamp leads it off for Logan. Logan on the right side, wow. and he walks. His pivot pick slid as he tried to establish position. 56-51, you see your score. Five-point ball game, under five minutes to go. This is a dandy. Salas brings it across the timeline. Picked up by Steiner. Out to Fields. Dermer out front, top of the key. Over to Salas. Salas back to Dermer. Dermer. Three seconds is the call on Friend. Steve Friend in there, John. Chris Lucas trapped Friend inside. Wouldn't let him get out. Got the call. A little tip for tap, shall oh, we yeah. say, in the last two times down the floor. That's just, that's good gamesmanship. Logan on the inbound. And the ball is tipped and intercepted. Here's Sarah, or Jesse rather. Jesse off the glass, it's good. Got the spin. 
pressure once again in the backcourt. Rupert can't and his pass is tipped out of bounds by Jesse. 4 10 left to go in this ball game. Camper's doing this real well. They're taking a page out of the Fort Hill Sentinel book because the Sentinels are good anticipators as well. Nelson across the timeline. And the pass is tipped away from him, but it comes to help center. He splits the defense. Brace horse is straight up the middle, leaves it off for Nelson for three. Got it! Oh, yeah! A pot of gold at the end of the rainbow for Ryan Nelson, and it's a four point game. 58 54. As Salas brings Nelson across the timeline on his hip. Still has him on his hip. Out front they go, and they swing it over to Dermer. Dermer on the baseline, and it is intercepted, stolen by Rupert Camp, and Rupert Camp picks up the foul, I do believe. You're right, John, it is on. Here it is, Rupert coming Camp. right at you. Now, Rupert Camp did a nice job, but as you saw, the second thrust in there came across the body. Uh, Jake Dermer got him on the arm. Good call there by Gary Hager. Toby Eric up and coaching, as is Joe Carter on the far sideline. Both coaches standing at the free throw line is Jake Dermer. High school basketball action at its best. And it's in and out. The tip goes off the top of the banking board. And it will be Russian basketball. And it should be. Steve Friend had that tip. Rupin Camp, two key the inbounds. Friend on the inbounder. Helmstetter splits the defense. Comes up the far sideline. He has Nelson. He finds him off the glass. It's good. For Logan. Check that. Logan. Todd Logan. And a two-point game. 58-56. He may look for a timeout here. Salas across the timeline. Still with it. To Fields. Fields finds Jesse. He pulls up. It's no good. To, to field. His shot is blocked by Kukas. And Kukas picks up the foul. Kukas doing what he has to do. Now here's the miss. A tip by Dermer. To Fields right away. And Fields going up. Kukas got the ball the first time. And the second press got the hand. Chris Kukas picking up his third. And Mike Fields on the line for his first trip. To the stripe in this game. 302 left. Allegheny 58. Bishop Falls 56. And a barn burner on Haystack. You planned that. You've been waiting <laughs> to use that line. No, I didn't. It just came to me. Nobody knows what I'm going to say next, least of all me. It's something good. And you got to know on both benches how much this game means to the Allegheny campers. He hits two pressure packed free throws. 60 to 56, quickly up the far sideline, come to start, and they turn the ball away. Fields leaves it off for Jesse on the baseline, and it's an air ball, and Fields has his shot blocked out of bounds by Homesteader. That snuffed right on top of the ball. Two, 5-0 on the scoreboard clock. Out front to go to Fields. Fields with Homesteader all over him. This is Salas between the circle, picked up by Nelson, who's really on him. They go back to Fields, stops, pops, no good, rebound to Bishop Wallace. Well, Fields had a good screen by Steve Friend, just couldn't connect. Nelson zigzags his way across the timeline, still with it. Two and a half to go. And he gets it back from Rupin Camp. He'll recycle it between the circles, hand it off to Helmstetter. Helmstetter into the paint. The shot is blocked by Friend, but Logan comes away with the rebound. They swing it down to Rupin Camp. Back out front to go to Nelson. Nelson to Kukas. Layup is good. Friend went for the steal and missed. 60 to 58. 2 0 1 left to go in this ball game. A two minute warning. And now the whistle blows. And a block is called on Ryan Nelson. Uh, Joe Carter cannot believe it. He cannot believe it. Let's see if we get another look at this from the sideline camera. Toby getting somebody's attention real quick. He wants his team over very quick. No timeout's been called. Man, this is like the old Big East and, and Atlantic Coast Conference in terms of the fan atmosphere tonight. All right, here we go. Now, this is just after the foul, a blocking foul call. Let me back this up a little bit. Right there. And as you saw it coming up, Nelson put his hands up. Just got the body. So they might have thought he was just giving a little nudge in there to Salas. 
He's at the free throw line. It's up and good. They have hit three pressure packed field or free throws rather. There you see the clock and the score. That's all you need to know at this moment on that scoreboard. And there you see the bonus underneath the guest. That is Allegheny. That was Salas' first attempt for the night. They have hit four straight field or uh, free throws. I'm going to get it right yet. I'm getting excited. That's right. Four nail biters. This is Logan. He's going out of the field. The roof and can't back to Logan. 145 to go. Inside to go. The ball tipped away by Friend. It comes to Dermer. Between the legs, he snaps it away. And this is Salas across the timeline. A minute 35 left to go in this ball game as he and Nelson are going at it. Pulls up the dribble. Finds Friend. Now to Dermer on the baseline. No. Rebounds loose and it's out front. And here comes Hempstead going on Salas. And he wisely backs it on the minute 19. Goes back to the baseline. Scoop shot off the top of the That's still glass. Is off the top of the board. Three on one, Camper break. Leaves it off the field, off the glass. It's good. Critical mistake by the Spartans. John is there relaxed as that ball went off the top of the board. 64 58. The ball goes out of bounds. Touch last by Allegheny. It will remain Spartan basketball. Well, if we can get a look at that last basket down here at some point in time. The Spartans just absolutely relax when the ball hit the top of the board. This is Helmstetter. Pump folks inside to go to Rupenkamp. This is Nelson. His shot is blocked by Fred. Oh, my. Big time rejection. Salas. Race horses across the timeline. To Dahmer. We try to hold up and play, and play keep away is what they're trying to do. This is Jesse. 38 seconds. And he is fouled. He yeah. is fouled by number 15, Todd Logan. Yeah, that's good foul because he can't wait in that situation. You're going to have to go out and stop the clock. Logan picks up his first. All right, now watch the backboard shot coming up here. Here's the shot. Scoop shot. Beautiful play. Now watch everybody in Waco. And uh, now out of bounds. Look at it. Dermer, though, picked it up and bolted with it. And we've got a timeout on the floor. 36 seconds left. In this ball game, there you see the score, 64 58 in favor of the Allegheny Campers. Back in the final and exciting 36 seconds right after this. There you heard it. You make the shot, you call time. 36 seconds left. 64 58. You foul. And the camper is good going the line. DJ Jesse will have one and one. They have hit their last four by my count. But Jesse from the free throw stripe tonight is two of seven. Left-hander shot is good. It got legs and crawled home. Boy, there's the classic shooter's roll. Coach Toby Eric is calling. He's pulling everybody Durham, off the lane. Durham, except for Fields. They have three campers back. Those Allegheny. It's short. Uncontested rebound to Klukas. 65-58. 30 seconds left in this ball game. The Steiner for three. Got it! the man you want with the ball, Steiner has been hot, and John, that is the hat trick for Ryan Steiner, three threes in the game. 26 seconds left, there you see the score, we'll be back right after this. Because we're going to foul, okay? 
Look at the foul. See if he can fall in. Go for his face guard. Try to get the steal. Yell ball. Never take the ball. You're behind. Try to double. Try to double and get the ball. Do not get cut up too far and give him a lamp. Ah, uh, we ain't got one. You have just eaten that into the Spartan huddle. You know what they want to do. Yeah, it's a crowd. Many on their feet. The stats are really there too, John, because right now, even with those four clutch free throws, five clutch really in this fourth quarter, the campers are still only shooting 50% from the line. Four point camper lead. Pressure on the inbounds. They foul Jesse. Logan picks up the personal foul. His second. Right now, that's arbitrary. And right now, uh, DJ might be the man you want on the free throw line. Exactly right, John. That is exactly right because, and I think Joe Carter was looking at that in there too. If they give him the ball, you want to foul DJ because he's been having trouble. Two campers on the uh, free throw lane, two back, and of course Jesse the shooter. Three for nine right now. Four for ten. And here's where you separate the champs from those who play hard. <laughs> Choose that carefully Joe because Carter I do really not want to play a thing away from Bishop Walls. He played a magnificent basketball game. Two pressure free throws converted by DJ Jesse. Timeout called. We're going to keep it right here. Boy, those were two huge free throws. Absolutely. DJ did not score, as we mentioned, in the third quarter and missed his first three shots in the first, fourth quarter, rather, before connecting. Let's listen Double in. Away. Double away. Set right. your man up. Set your man up. They don't even go to the press. He's going to press it. Yeah. Please check press, it out. Press offense. He can down spot up. Please check it out. Uh, Stein. Stein. The trail man will be able to play. Stein. In the damn rebound. Tremendous work. That is tremendous camera shots, guys. Outstanding. Absolutely wonderful. You get the feel of that game going inside the huddle. That, ladies and gentlemen, is professional broadcasting at its best. Well, you heard the Spartans. What they want to do is get the man, get the ball into the hands of the man with a hot hand, and that's Ryan Steiner right now. He has three threes. Well, they do get the ball into his hands. However, he's the inbounder. 24 seconds, six point camper lead. Nelson looks for Steiner. He can't find him. He's trapped. He looks for help. He calls timeout. Good move. Good Excellent move. move. But I think there, that may be the last timeout as I count them for Bishop Walsh. No, we didn't. And we will make this point as we come back. 16 seconds left. 67 61 in favor of Allegheny back with the remainder right after this. Coming right up off the double skill. You take it out. Now listen to him. If he can throw it to you, as he steps back in, I don't think there'll be anybody on here. So give it back if you don't have a shot. He should be able to. You know, no timeouts. You gotta pick him up right away. Pull on that, okay? Pull, pull right off the double. And then he runs through. After he runs down, he step out. You guys stay up on top a little bit and then get down the skill. Come on, let's go. I saw in there as well the slugger, Slug Armstrong, and their assistant coach for BW. And if I heard that right, what they're going to have is Steiner the inbound. I do not believe that Allegheny is going to contest that inbounds pass. They want to get it back to Steiner for a three off the right wing. And there you see Joe Carter directing traffic from the sideline. You just can't say enough about that camera. Steiner the inbound. He hasn't gotten it in yet. Finally, they do to Logan. He throws up a three. No good. Rebound fought for, and it's knocked out of bounds. It will remain Spartan basketball. They trail by six. 67-61. 12 seconds left in this ball game. Nelson. Right, or check that. Logan. Logan with two key inbounds. Anybody out there got any fingernails left? Jesse on him. They get it to Steiner for three. Got it! That was a play three, two. Holy cow. Timeout. Let me to tell you. Timeout. A, a foul is whistled. I mean to tell you, I don't think Steiner even saw the pass 
and he did that by intuition. He turned around, hurled it. Bo's already in. Get over, get over. Get over. Steiner hit that three, just what happened. All right, here it is. In there, and a timeout. A timeout you know, they didn't have. That's a technical foul, that's what it is. Okay. I'm not sure if that was designed or a mistake by the part of Bishop Walsh, but DJ Jesse is on the line for a second tee. And it's up and short, he made the first one. So Bishop Walls called a timeout they didn't have. And that's one thing that uh, Coach Toby Eric went over to the scorer's table and said they're out of timeouts, right? And he was correct. Four point Allegheny lead. And they get the ball back. With seven ticks to go. Against the team. You know what? Toby Eric's team, his two teams, have been 44-2 up to this point. One of the teams to have beaten them was the Bishop Walsh Spartans. And the other team was it's, it's Fort Hill. Fort Hill. So it kind of gives you an idea of what kind of action you can expect in a Cumberland City basketball game. And <laughs> wow. We get the ball, push it, pull up, try to jump into it, maybe we'll get a four-point play. All right. Let's steal the ball right here. Steal the ball here. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Now Allegheny will get the ball. As you heard, Joe Carter's troops have been assigned the task of stealing the inbounds pass. Allegheny gets the basketball. They're putting sufficient pressure on them. If uh, campers can't get it in, get the five-second ball, then they have a turnover. Thurman, the key to inbounds. They get it in the field, six seconds left. And it looks like he'll run the ball or the clock out to Jesse. And time expires, and that's your ball game. Allegheny goes undefeated in the city. The fans storm the court as both teams exchange the handshakes after a very hard fight contest. Your final score is Allegheny 68 and Bishop Walsh, 64. Allegheny ends the city season with a mark of 4-0. and And Bishop Walsh ends its city year with a mark of 1-3. and They tie Fort Hill for second place in the city. There's your final score. Allegheny, 68. Bishop Walsh, 64. Back with postgame activities right after this. We're back in the coach's corner here in the postgame as the Allegheny Campers score a 68-64 win over the Bishop Wall Spartans or with victorious head coach Toby Eric. Uh, you know, Toby, this is kind of getting to be old hat over here in the coach's corner after wins, but my goodness, this was a Donnybrook tonight, was it not? It was a great city game, and, and you know, they were well prepared for us, and uh, they played us as tough as anybody has all season. I, I think... Uh, I think our kids showed a lot of class and, and a lot of composure at the end of the game and the end of the game situations, and you know we were able to win the game at the end. Ball handling was the key, but I, I wanted to ask you, early in this game, in fact, midway through the game, Denny Salas, who normally handles the ball a lot for you, was rotating down in the baseline. You had Adam Whitaker and even Mike Fields handling that. What was the strategy there? Well, there was no strategy there. We were just getting, we were just getting on our, on our offense. We didn't have good court balance, and it wasn't anything by design. It just happened that way, and we weren't rotating the ball and rotating our people out to the wings and where the spots they should have been. So it wasn't anything by design. That just happens sometimes. And you know, it, when you go through a course of 20 games or whatever it is, 21, you know, you're going to have nights like that. Steve Friend once again coming up big offensively, big defensively, three block shots. And when you had the mismatch inside on Ryan Steiner, Steve just took it to the hole. Well, he did, and, and Steve's been getting better every game. I, I think, you know, he, he's just been a whale of a player for us. He, he, he's been giving us great minutes all year, and, and I'm just real happy. He's been developing as a player, and uh, he's a great kid. He, you know, he's a straight-A student, so what can you say? 
DJ Jesse had a little bit of a uh, problem in the second half, didn't score in the third quarter, was having his trouble from the free throw line. But when it came down to crunch time, DJ made the free throws. Well, you know, DJ was big down the stretch, and that's what he did last year. And, you know, we depend on him to do that, and I have all the confidence in the world. And he had a rough night. You know, he's going to have a rough night. He is human. and uh, But but when it counted, I, I thought he'd come up big. Dennis hit some foul shots. Jake made some big plays inside. Michael Fields was big. I mean, the kids, you know, when they had to stand up, they stand up. And, you know, they stood up, and uh, we were able to win the ball game. A touch on Michael Fields real quick. He didn't have much more than the – Ended the game really with nine points, had only one score in that first half, and that was a big three-pointer near the end of the second quarter. Well, you know, Michael Michael has, has been a lot more consistent second half of the season, and, you know, I, I don't know that we shot the ball real well all night long, but you have to give them credit for playing good defense. And uh, he got in some quick foul trouble, and I, I think that might have taken him off the game, you know, out of the game. It did take him out of the game and maybe got him out of the flow a little bit early. All right, you're 21-0 and 0 on the season right now, and uh, it doesn't stop for you. As tomorrow night, you have to go up to Savage and play. Well, it doesn't stop, and, you know, George will have his kids ready tomorrow night, and, and we still need to win. All right, congratulations, Toby Eric. A hard-fought game, well-coached game on both sides of this line. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, there you have it, head coach Toby Eric with a 68-64 win. Let's take a look at some of the scoring for tonight for the Allegheny Campers. In scoring for them, DJ Jesse with 16 points. Steve Friend, 16 points, as we mentioned at first half. Steve Friend unconscious, 6 for 7 from the floor in the line. Also scoring, Mike Fields with 9 points. Denny Salas with 6. Adam Whitaker with 4. And with 8 points apiece, Jake Dermer and Mike Harvey. On the flip side, for the Bishop Wall Spartans, leading all scorers tonight, having an outstanding game. Chris Klukas, he ended the night with 21 points. Ryan Steiner right in behind him with 19 points. Four three-pointers all in the second half, and he hit like three, and it was three of five three-point attempts. Also scoring in double figures, Todd Logan had a good game. He ended the game with 10 points. Also scoring, Ryan Nelson with five. Jason Helmstetter ended with six. Robbie Rubenkamp with one point, and with two points, Andy Tetchnell. We will be back with some closing comments tonight. The Campers with a big win, 68-64 over the Spartans. We'll be back with John Cunningham right after this. Back in the coach's corner. I know we promised you John Cunningham, but we got somebody that's a lot better looking than him, and that's the head coach, Joe Carter of the Bishop Wall Spartans. Joe, this was a classic city game. Your kids fought tooth and nail. They got down in the first half. They were outscored in the second quarter, 26-16, but they came back hard in the second half. Well, they did, and, and that's all as a coach you can ask for is for your kids to go out and give you everything they have, and I thought they did that tonight. And you know, I'm proud of the effort they gave us. Great. Chris Lucas had a great game on the boards, uh, inside and out, scored 21 points on the night. But uh, you've been getting some great play from Ryan Steiner. He had four three-pointers, and he has really been the go-to guy at 19-9 for you. Well, he was. He in this, uh, Especially his last couple games, he's been knocking down the threes for us. And, and I thought he did play a great game. And, and Chris Lucas has been very steady for us all year. And, and tonight, especially against the odds that he went up against, I thought he did a great job. And, and the whole team did. I thought we, you know, we had some breakdowns. And Allegheny's a great basketball team give them credit they have so many athletes and so many big people that they can run at you but uh, you know our kids have been looking for this game for a long time unfortunately if we'd have played with this amount of intensity in a couple of the other games we'd come out with wins and you know we that's one thing we need to learn to do but Joe, your defense came out in the third quarter. He went off the 1-3-1 matchup, and I thought Robbie Rupenkamp did a credible job on the baseline as they held D.J. Jesse scoreless in the third quarter. Well, I think that's probably as a coaching mistake. Uh, we was probably set in the 1-3-1 too long tonight, and um, if we'd have come out, maybe played man. You know how when you lose by four, you always wonder what you could do, and uh, if you get blown out, you know, there's nothing you can do. But I thought we might have stuck in the 1-3-1 a little bit too long, and but we did. Robbie Rupenkamp and Todd Logan took D.J., and uh, you know, they kind of to, uh, you know, offset him a little bit. And I thought we had tremendous pressure on the ball. I thought Ryan Nelson just did a great job on the ball for us and, and tried to, kind of took Dennis Silas out of his game for a little bit. And I haven't seen that done too many times. But, again, these kids worked. and You know, it didn't look like a 3-18 and team when they came out and on the court. And, you know, I, the effort was there, and that's all I can ask for. It was a great chess game, uh, getting a chance to listen to, to your huddle and Toby's huddle as uh, your kids came back in that fourth quarter, the last three minutes. And really, all you can ask your team to do is to give themselves an opportunity to win the game, and they followed the instructions that were given to them and gave themselves that opportunity to win. Well, that is. That's all we wanted was a chance to win this game, and we had that chance. You know, we had the ball, I think, down two, and uh, we didn't get a good shot. And, 
they went down and got one. And, you know, they, I thought they did a great job at the foul line. They, they're not a great foul shooting team, but those guys sure took over tonight and those seniors hit the big fouls for them down. And, you know, and that's the name of the game. The seniors performed, our seniors performed. But you could tell they've been in a lot of big games, and, and, and that's why they're 20-0, and 0 and that's why we're 3-18. and 18. Down the stretch, they seem to handle a little bit better than we did, but I'm not too sure a whole lot of that team or those fans came in here tonight thought it was going to be that close at the end. And, and, and you know, that's what makes, that's what pleases me. I, I don't like to be happy when you lose, but the effort was there tonight, and that's, that's what we needed. And on that note, we'll close and congratulate you on great effort tonight by your team, great strategy, and a well-coached game tonight, Joe well, Carter. thanks, Jamie. I appreciate that very much. All right, there we have Joe Carter, the head coach of the Bishop Wall Spartans. And now we'll bring John back into the picture. And I'm sure uh, can't get away from you now. can't get away from him now. John, a well-called game play-by-play for you tonight. Oh. And this is the type of game that broadcasters just live and breathe for. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you, this is uh, yet another classic uh, between Allegheny and Bishop Walsh. I mean, you can go down through the years and you'll find many, many games like this. Uh, one that comes to mind is a few years ago when Barry Page was still playing for the Bishop Walsh Spartans. That game went into overtime, uh, double overtime, as a matter of fact, if, if I recall correctly, and that was just a barn burner of a game. And this is yet, as we say, another in a long series. And you got to give uh, the Bishop Walsh kids a lot of credit. They hung in there. They, they could have folded the tent there as Allegheny started to take control of this ball game about midway through the second quarter. And they uh, hung right in there with the uh, three-point uh, field goals, and they took this game right down to the wire. And uh, got to give uh, the Allegheny kids credit, too, because uh, although they had some trouble converting free throws, when it counted, they hit them. They did indeed. And when they also had to have the inside play, uh, they got it from guys like Steve Friend and Jake Dermer. Dermer, not a lot of points tonight, but he had two block shots and three strips from behind defensively. Those stats don't always show up in the, the line score, but they're very important. Yes, they are. I mean, it's, it's the little things that help win ball games, and they do the little things very well. And there was the end of the score. It was Allegheny 68 and the Bishop Wall Spartan 64. And I think everybody on both sides of this gymnasium tonight, whether you won or lost, left the game tonight feeling like they saw one heck of an athletic contest. Yes, indeed. The atmosphere was just tremendous. And I know that when you uh, take a look at this game, uh, I'm sure you'll get uh, goosebumps seeing it all over again. And when you watch the credits tonight, folks, I also wanted you to pay attention to the cameramen and a Greg Honeycutt in the truck because they have just given you some outstanding shots tonight. And we applaud all you guys out there, the technical crew. And don't get a lot of the... Uh, the song and the glory that uh, we broadcasters seem to get almost by fault sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but you guys. In the right place at the right time. Yeah, but you fans saw a great technical game tonight, too, and we were very happy with commercial video to bring you that. Coming up next, it's going to be Allegheny and Mount Savage and uh, this camper team with one more mile to go. This is the one they need. They win uh, this ball game and they will host the region playoffs. Uh, they will be the top seed as Einstein lost one of their five remaining ball games. So uh, what Allegheny had to do coming into this game is to win this game and also to win the game against Mount Savage. All right, that's going to do it from Bishop Walls tonight. I want to thank all of you for tuning in. Keep tuned in because commercial video has a lot more to give you in a line of high school basketball. For John Cunningham, I'm Jamie O'Hanlon, reminding you the final score tonight was the Allegheny Campers 68, the Bishop Walls Spartan 64. Hey, make it a good night. <laughs>